Hey there, everyone. It's Camber here with the Yo Pro No. I am here today with Bargavi Golaru, a 29 year old senior environmental engineer currently in New York City. Um, so thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm glad you're here. And um, I always like to start our interviews by sharing how we were connected because, you know, that's one of the kind of core pieces of the Yo Pro No. And so your cousin, um, Shravani, uh, who we interviewed, I guess, a couple of months ago now, uh, you guys got, con or we were connected that way. Yeah. So I always like to share that little tidbit. So Bargavi, let's just go ahead and, and start off by doing a you know, brief background. So tell us where you're from, um, kind of the path that has led you here to your current job, and then we'll really dive into the details after that introduction. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Bhargavi Galuru. I'm a civil and environmental engineer by a background in practice. I currently work as a senior engineer in New York City for a very small environmental consulting firm. Um, so how did it all start? Uh, I guess um, I went after, right after grad school, I went to school in North Carolina um, and I accepted a job in the New York, New Jersey area with a big consulting firm, um, environmental consulting firm, where I worked as an industrial wastewater engineer. And after working um, at that firm for up to three years, I kind of got into, I got tired of the whole corporate um, lifestyle, just working for profit and all of that. So I decided to kind of reevaluate and take a chance um, to try out the nonprofit world. And um, one of the biggest interests for me has all since school has always been inter international development. And I really wanted to work towards the UN sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. um, so I moved to India for a year uh, to work for a, non a local nonprofit in Delhi, wow. but I did water sanitation and hygiene kind of work, but it was very high level uh, policy, working with the government officials um, and all of that. Um, and after, and I quickly realized that nonprofits work similar to uh, any other businesses and um, learning that like policy making takes a lot of time and um, I need to spend a lot more time uh, to kind of see something come through and quickly realize that I wanted to get back into uh, the details of engineering implementation, which is what I used to do before, um, which led me to coming, moving back um, to the US in 2020 or end of January, 2020. And that was, and I started applying to jobs in um, March. I knew I wanted to be in New York City, uh, but that was right at the beginning of the pandemic. So, and eventually I started working here for a very small company. We are a team of nine people and I work as their senior engineer right now. Great. Um, well, that was a very concise <laughs> kind of talking about your, your path thus far. So thank you for doing that. So, uh, yeah. so uh, concisely. Um, I have a lot of things that I want to unpack after hearing that, but let's first start by talking about um, your current job. So team of nine, you know, maybe let's compare that to the first consulting job that you had to this job now, because I mean, you're doing similar work, correct? Yeah, correct. But it's obviously very different. So talk about some of the comparisons. Yeah, um, so working for a smaller company means you're wearing multiple hats, you're playing, like, you know, you are your own editor, like there's nobody else that I could send my proposal to, to have it formatted or edited, I have to do all of that, uh, you're marketing the company um, yourself. Uh, and my role has to do with starting a water resource recovery division for the company. So a lot of it has I'm doing a lot of business development kind of work here versus uh, uh, not just technical, but I also have to be involved in this pretty much every part of like what my company does um, because it is a small company and everybody kind of needs to take some kind of ownership uh, versus working for like a well-established mid-size like company uh, has its own perks where you yeah, you know, you, there's somebody that you could go to at all times. And um, for a smaller company, it's like, try to figure out if you can swim, like, or yeah. Sink. yeah. So uh, in that way, I feel like I've grown a lot uh, with, you know, with my current job, uh, just trying to uh, also like learn how a business is run, right? You are in the front seat row of like, oh, what projects like you can apply to, or like as simple as even like having a say in where 
your office is going to be mm -hmm. um, working for a bigger company like you're you're not involved in all those decisions versus right now it's it's like everybody gets to have a has say in where right. you want to be yeah no I think that's great yeah. I mean I'm sure that there were some comparisons to the nonprofit that you worked for like you said um, and so yeah. I do want to talk next about that so you're in India and you kind of had this realization that all right, this is, it takes a long time for policy change. Um, and I think it's very admirable that you moved there and you, you know, you really wanted to work towards, um, you know, the UN goals. I think that's, uh, that's fantastic. But can you kind of walk us through more about that? What was going on in your head in that year? And really what ultimately was it that, that made you make the jump? a jump to India or come back? A jump to come back. Mm -hmm. Come back. Okay. So making the choice to move to India was challenging in itself, but um, I was happy to do it because I've been, every time I asked myself like where I wanted to be 10 years from now, it was always, hey, I want to work in the international development sector. Um, and once I got to India, um, other like I've never worked in India before uh, so it was a whole new work culture that I was trying to like get adjusted to and um, the the world like it, the international development like scene was very different from how like regular consulting here works because um, when it comes to policy I'm working because I worked with um, 20 different organizations trying to get them all to the same page and try to work with government officials so my whole entire job there was to coordinate um between these organizations um to kind of come up with like a long-term policy for india's like sanitation um okay in sanitation program uh, so that was very like it was great because i got to see how different uh like nonprofits, educational institutions and foundations work together, but also I wasn't really like seeing anything come to life like in front of me. And I think working as an engineer, um, I am used to like seeing something I design come to life, at least like in my previous job, I had yeah. that like experience, everything um, that I was involved with, I was able to see it come to life, like be built from ground up, um, which can actually be a very like gratifying um, just to see change happening in front of you. And that was definitely not the case with India. And when you put that to like nonprofits, like the, I was in a very, two very contrasting like worlds in the mornings, I would go to the slums and see all of this. And then I come back in the evenings, all our meetings were in like five-star hotels right. in India. So that like, um, contrast uh, is emotionally really hard for me to kind of uh, wrap my head around and just like feel like oh this like you just don't really know what you could do at that point and like and you add that to like my whole family was here I was living in Delhi by myself I didn't really know anybody there um, so all of that like came together and I, I eventually realized I wasn't very happy doing what I was doing and and Camber, I have to say that was probably the hardest decision to make to come back to India because I was like, I, I took this chance, but like realizing that it's not for me um, and making that like call to be like, okay, accepting that, oh, what I thought of, I would, where I thought I would want to be is not really where I wanted to be. Yeah, to be I mean, so. that I completely understand that. And I think a lot of young professionals face that because we just, we often think that the next step that we take, it's greener on, you know, it's always greener on the other side. And so like you make that jump and you're like, it's going to be great. It's what I'm supposed to do. And then when it doesn't happen, like the way you kind of visualize it, that can be yeah. really, um, really discouraging, I think. Right. And quite honestly, I feel like um, a part of I've romanticized nonprofits a lot before uh, making the move and like realizing that it's not a whole lot different from like a business was also like really hard for me to digest because I was like, oh, OK, like uh, it, it makes sense. Uh, right. It makes sense how they were like why they worked that way. But it was it was also very um uh, I, was not what I expected to yeah, say the no, least. I, oh. I think that's a great 
A great thing to mention, um, and I really feel like that's going to be a huge theme just for, from this interview, a huge takeaway mm-hmm. that you know, young professionals in the audience who are listening or maybe future young professionals can really hear that and say, okay, so like maybe they were kind of romanticizing the idea of working yeah. for a nonprofit, but it really, I mean, we had yeah. we talked about this at the beginning. Obviously, I work for a nonprofit full-time and it's a business. A lot of people don't think that but yeah. it, it is run the same way. The only difference is we have certain, you know, tax exemptions, but, um, <laughs> but I will say, um, I just want to mention this before I move on to the next question, because I, mm-hmm. um, I actually spent three months in India studying, um, in college. And we also had, when you mentioned the contrast of, you know, mm-hmm. going into the slums and then going to five-star hotels, like we did that every day. We would, we would, you know, be on the streets and see, what we saw and then we would go back to our five-star hotels and that was always really challenging for me so again it's just kind of a side note but I wanted you to know that I've I've had that experience and I I understand um and obviously I wasn't there for a full year so I can imagine that probably I can only imagine what that does to your head after a long time yeah and I always say my biggest takeaway was like going in I wanted to be like oh I want my own nonprofit one day right and coming back it kind of flipped to oh I want to start my own foundation because that's that kind of uh, my thinking towards money has like changed drastically Mm -hmm. after this experience because it it proved to me that hey if you can actually make decisions like if you're funding things um, long term I guess no absolutely Um, And thank you for sharing all of that. Again, I think it's going to be really valuable for somebody to listen to this or watch this and and recognize that it's okay to think one thing and then come out of that experience another way. That's that's often what happens with jobs. Um, You think you're going to want something and then it turns out to be completely different and that's okay because it just gets you to, it gets you closer to the next step. Um, So you may have already answered this. So just correct me if I, if you know, you already have, but you already talked about a challenge that was obviously this, uh, you know, transition back, Mm -hmm. but what is your biggest hardship and challenge when you look back at the, you know, your young professional career thus far, what's been the biggest hardship for you? Um, I think, well, two things, like I said, like making that call to come back from India was definitely hard for me for lots of different reasons, right? Because it's like I left I resigned my job here, like uh, to kind of go there and prove, like wanted Mm -hmm. to prove everybody wrong that I was making the right choice. But again, at the cost of like, you know, it it shouldn't come at the cost of me being unhappy. That that was probably the hardest um, thing, but also coming back and trying to start the job search right at the beginning of the pandemic. um, That was uh, quite hard as well. you know, like when I started applying and interviewing, it was early March. And by the time it was uh, for it, the time came for them to make a decision, you know, everybody was affected by the pandemic. Yeah. And um, it, sometimes, the you know, they couldn't afford to hire anybody else or um, just like, you know, even with New York, um, especially with New York, I, the, I accepted the job in April, but I didn't really have a start date until July. Mm -hmm. Um, So like not really knowing what's going to happen in between uh, was also like a very challenging time. Yeah, no, I, that's, I can imagine. Um, And I I think we could talk, we could have a full podcast just, (laughs) Um, but in the interest interest of time, I am going to start winding down um, with two more Mm -hmm. questions. I just held up three, two more questions. Um, the, the first being, you know, for anyone who is interested in the, you know, the environmental engineer space, you know, civil engineer space, what would you tell them? Um, you know, try to do some research on like which, because environmental engineering itself is a very vast field. You could get involved in water, like stormwater, wastewater. Uh, so trying trying to do some research and understand like what it is that you're interested in. And also I, I would say like, don't be afraid to like reach out to people who are already working in that field on LinkedIn um, and just want to have a conversation about how their day-to-day like job looks like to see if that's something that truly interests you or not um and yeah I think that would be my biggest advice uh, right. reach out to as many people as you can uh, yeah and, and that's a like, well, all fields you know so I, yeah, love, absolutely. I love that I like when they're transferable yeah. pieces of advice um okay and then my last question for you is what do you like about being a young professional outside of the office 
Um, I, j- I love being able to like think about outside the office. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so let me think about it. Um, like if I did throw you a curveball before, I was like, I'm not gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, I like being able to like, you know, um, I mean, yeah, we're all young professional in different fields, but um, I think like in network ev- events or just like being able to talk to other young professionals who are doing some something very different, there's still a lot of commonalities in how we approach like work. Um, and uh, like, I, I've, I love like, you know, seeing people make their boundaries like in, in work and out of like outside of work and like being able to do other things other than just work. And you know, a lot of my friends have like their side hustles, whether it's podcasting or acting or whatever it is that they're interested in. And I, and I, I see a lot more of those uh, and being a young professional like opens up a lot more opportunities. Yeah, yeah I think so too. Um, well, any last pieces of advice before we wrap up today? Um, take a chance like I I would I 100% agree whether you like it or not like you won't know until you do it so if there is something that you really want to do and are afraid that uh, you're always going to bounce back so absolutely um well Bhargavi thank you so much for your time today I wish we could talk longer um (laughs) that earlier this is not a a one-time thing we will definitely stay connected but thanks so much for being on the show Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. I hope I didn't bore anybody. (laughs) Definitely not.